just have to uh, install the cheek pads and you're ready to go riding. Now, cheek pads are, are real easy to put in. You always get one that pops right in and you always get the one that fights you a little bit. But first, you've got the notch at the back. Always install the back first. Slide it until you feel it kind of pop in, in place sliding backwards. Then you work your way forward, pushing it into the, into the slot there, and then pop the front into place. Once it's all in, in place, you're just gonna do those three snaps back up in the front, making sure that you pull this, uh, the strap through before you snap it. Also take the time to make sure that while you're working on this, none of the wires have come out and moved around. Make sure they're nicely tucked in behind there. Even if you need to, making sure that they're looped behind snaps so that they don't come out accidentally later on while you're using the helmet. Oftentimes that happens because you're pulling the helmet on and off, the pads will move around and slowly a wire will stick out. That's why I like to put it behind the, uh, the main, main uh, top pad and helmet to prevent it from doing that. All right, same drill on the other side. Once again, you get your cheek pads in here, but there's a couple of little extra things you gotta worry about on this side of the helmet. Realize you're gonna need a little bit of slack here. Make sure you don't uh, pull the wires too tight because you gotta have them tuck in and have enough room to get the, uh, this, this slot to drop down in there without rubbing on the wires or fatiguing them over a long time. Good helmet's gonna last you a good number of years and you don't wanna have something where you accidentally end up fraying the wires later on. Also make sure that you tuck this, uh, the wire for your microphone. Once again, using the pad to hold that in place, you can even loop it like that and put the snap on there so that you don't have to worry about that coming loose anywhere. Um, it's up to you. I, I don't need to on my helmet, but if it makes you feel better, you can also put, uh, use just a, a small piece of uh, tape or you can even use, I've seen some people who just put just a little dab of, of uh, glue on there to hold this wire so it doesn't stick out. Um, if you get the pad in place properly, that probably won't be necessary. But let's pop the pad in and uh, we'll be all set. Well, you can see we've got everything tucked in here now. Microphone wire is run behind the cheek pad. All of these are in here, nice and neat and tidy. Last thing you do, flip the helmet over, you got this. Slide that right down and your new comm system is installed. Now, what I always tell people is make sure before you even start trying to sync up your phone, your GPS, any of this other stuff, what you wanna do, any devices that you're using, always go on, make sure that your phone, the comm system, any nav or TFT displays that you're hooking onto it are on their latest update and uh, fully charged. Uh, biggest mistake people make is they try and uh, sync stuff up that isn't properly updated and then they end up with a, a big mess on their hands. But comm system's all installed here. Last but not least, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on that uh, new cool transition shield, put the icing on the cake. You'll see here, you can uh, release the visor by pulling down on this and the visor just picks right up like that. All right, well, let's open up this cool new transition shield here. Now, one of the things a lot of people will do is they'll just rip into this and uh, end up throwing out this, this uh, bag that it comes in. I like to save the, the bag. It gives you a great way to store your uh, clear shield um, by sliding this out of here save this bag and that way you don't scratch up your clear shield. If for some reason you want to use it again later, you can. Now one of the things I mentioned that comes with this shield, or with the helmet I should say, uh, is the uh, pin lock setup. We're going to install that now and it's just a great way to uh, keep your helmet from fogging up, uh, especially if you ride in Cooler, cooler weather, or if you if you ride in rain in that, you'll find that it's it's a really nice way to keep your your uh, windshield clean and keep you safe. Now they do put a, a little up arrow on here. Of course, that matches up on this shield in particular because it has a uh, dip in it. It's very easy to make sure that you don't install it upside down. Um, start by 
clicking one, one side into place, then uh, fold the piece in the middle and tuck the other side into place. Push it down in the middle. Once it's installed, and I always give it a little, little flex there to make sure that it's seated properly. Then you remove the protective film, and that's all there is to it. Let's put that back on the helmet here. All right, well, there's the helmet all finished up, the Hornet X2 and the Senna New 50 S Com system installed. Uh, we also have the transition lens on there. So I'm gonna take it out for a ride and then I'll stop back in the shop and give you some of my feedback of what I think about the new helmet. All right, well, after getting a chance to ride this helmet and listen to the new comm system, a couple of things really jumped out at me. Um, I've always used full face helmets. Um, normally I've, I've been more of a, a GTR or a GTR2 type person. Um, and one of the things that I was worried about was the visor. A lot of people who aren't familiar with adventure helmets or even guys who are riding in the dirt who aren't sure about what's gonna happen when I get up to, to highway speed with it. One of the things that really impressed me on it, now I, I was riding a GS, just, just so people know. Um, one of the things that really impressed me on it was there was none of that lift that I expected on the helmet where you, the wind's pulling back on it. In fact, actually what I noticed was is that at speed, it almost seemed like the helmet was, was pushing down slightly or neutral. Um, don't know what, what showy, what magic they worked uh, when they were designing this helmet, but they really got that right. Another thing that I really noticed, I, once again, I'm used to uh, a helmet without a visor and I was expecting a lot more noise. This helmet is unbelievably quiet for being an adventure helmet. I was really impressed with that. Now coupled with that, by it being a quiet helmet, I was also really impressed with the sound quality and volume that was available from the Senna. The Senna has uh, always been a great unit, um, but on the louder helmets, a lot of people had feedback that they said they wanted more volume, better sound quality, and they did that with the 50. Um, excellent sound quality, better volume, and there are some settings also within the Senna app that allow you to tune it and make it a little bit better sound quality for you. Now, some of the things that I would say, uh, reasons to buy this helmet would be anyone who likes to do commuting, uh, you know, rides uh, bright days, dim days, hot, cold, rain, shine. Um, the nice thing about this is you're heading into the sun, you can just dip your chin a little bit and get, get that visor to help, just like a baseball cap does. Uh, dirt bike guys have been doing this for years and it's starting to come over so now that, that uh, the street bike and adventure guys can also enjoy that feature. Nice and quiet, unlike some of the other dirt bike helmets or transition helmets, uh, this is a helmet that you can really live with in the real world. Um, I will also say, comm system wise, ease of operation, I really like the, the wheel system. Now some people really prefer the buttons, I've used both, I, I like the wheel. Um, but hey, everyone's gonna have their preference there. But I did find it was really easy to use. Now in all fairness, I've been using a Senna for years, so the button configuration is almost identical to any of the earlier models. If you're looking to upgrade, this is, this is the new latest and greatest, and it is well worth the money. Um, the sound quality is a, a vast improvement, and I was really impressed with it. Uh, transition lens, if you've got super light sensitive eyes, Keep in mind, it does not get quite as dark as a regular uh, dark tinted shield, um, but it does an excellent job of it and not having to fiddle around with putting a visor up or down or even if you're uh, gonna change it out like on this helmet, um, the, the, the convenience is, is definitely worth it there. But great, great airflow through the helmet, breathe well, um, really impressed with how quiet it is, how much air was actually passing through the helmet as well. So hope these uh, reviews help you out a little bit. If you have any questions, of course, uh, contact me at Hermes. Um, we can help you get the right helmet and the right comm system for you. And uh, certainly, uh, if, if you're having trouble or whatever, we also help out. If you're buying a new helmet and comm system, heck, I'll put it in for you. Hey, thanks again for watching. 
Be sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and look forward to see you out there riding.